It's now been nine weeks since I have this grow light set up here and my babies are growing. They are growing fast and colorful. This is the pros or advantage of using a grow light indoors. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. But what are the cons or disadvantage of indoor succulent propagation? The very, very first thing I'm going to show you are the gnats. You can't help it. They're in the soil. Doesn't matter uh, what you do to the soil. The all, most of the potting mix that I get now, they all you open it up and then the gnats, the fungus gnats, these uh, little critters. They go everywhere. They get up your nose and uh, your ears. Since having this, so it's a fly catcher ribbon and you open it up, you pull that thing there and then you just uh, tie it to both ends somewhere. It has saved us a lot of trouble with the gnats. No more going up your nose and in your ear and in your eyes they're trying to get the moisture or something i don't know but anyway i don't even know how they start in it what 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 are you good for apart from eating the roots and stuff of plants and whatever but enough of the nuts so this is my setup and so nine weeks i've been growing them and i am so happy with my grow light but anyway, just when you thought, I can turn it off and start growing it outside because uh, it's starting to warm up. We are getting rained on again and getting cold and uh, again. So I still can't put them outside. But in saying that, the temperature is not going to go down into freezing or we won't be getting frost anymore so I thought uh, a lot of these as well are grown see this one's now it's time to take this out and there's a new growth there but I might just have to chop that off so time for moving up into the world or moving out <laughs> so I'm kicking you all out here most of them there's still a few that has to stay here and there'll be some new ones that's coming in as well but anyway this one's now general care about um, having a grow light so this is my experience with a grow light this is the first time I've ever used a grow light in my life and I am very impressed with it so I've got the Mars Hydro SP3000 and again, I'm going to reiterate this. I am not paid to do this, nor am I obligated to do anything for them anymore. But I just like the unit because it works for me and works really well. Okay, I'm just looking at the Sinisho string of um, angel's tears that I've got here. So this one now, the one I've got outside, i got a comparable plant that I've grown outside. Taken the same time, same size, same channel, and this one is much, much bigger and longer and a uh, stronger plant. The other one is looks a bit sickly, the one outside. So this one is, I don't know how it's going to fare once I take that outside, but so far in here, it grows really, really well. But the only thing I have issues with it is, is get all this sticky stuff on it. It feels... The stickiness, so that's got nothing to do with the grow light. It's got something to do with air circulation. So if you're having a grow light inside, I find that one should have some fan uh, to circulate the air because once the air gets stale, all these insects or something happens where in the plants just get sticky. So even this one, this is uh, Kanihini. Oops, the leaf just falling off. Did I just touch the leaf? Okay, I, I've taken it last night and... I just hit that leaf from last night because I went and had a look at something. Okay, again, I knocked it. The other leaf, look at that, look at that. The other leaf falling off. But anyway, so it's really time for me to bring this outside. They're good if they're inside, but this one goes all yellow, pink, or red, this, this plant, when it's uh, grown in the sun, sort of almost that color. Same as that, uh, what are you, Marcus? Are you Sedevaria Marcus? Yeah, I think you are. I'm not sure whether it's Sedevaria or Chivaria. So many plants, I can't remember all the name, but it's a Marcus. This 
Pachy Python, uh, Sedowski, I think, uh, Baby Fingers. So they're Baby Fingers, okay, the, the cute name is Baby Fingers. And that needs to be transplanted because they are getting too big and crowded for the plant there and there's quite a few plant in there so one two three four five six seven ten eleven twelve twelve so i say about 18 plants i could get out of that when i split it up individually and they will grow much faster as well when that when they're not crowded in so that's the reason why i'm doing this video so i can show you before i take this all away show you the progress okay so i want to talk about uh caring for these plants indoors so number one you're going to have the gnats uh, trap uh, the ribbon or something sticky paper some sort to get rid of the gnats so they don't go up your nose number two is circulation you need air circulation or else they get really sticky and you get uh, aphids see that aphids see look at that see that black stuff there okay that's aphids some plants have them and some plants don't. So there's certain plants. So this is a uh, Echeveria Fukushu Nishiki. Fukushu Nishiki, which is well tiny. I think on my previous videos from my other channel, you've seen them before. They're only tiny. And look, another baby here, not growing. I should really put this in here. And then now I don't know what the name is. So I'm just gonna put you there, and you're gonna be. Um, a surprise okay because I wouldn't know what it is I just have to guess what it is later or maybe it's PVN as well but maybe it just fell off there I'm not sure but anyway you can see the aphids in the center there so that black stuff that's aphids so this is what happened for uh, when you have when you're lacking air circulation so again I'm getting rid of the oh they suck the look at that trying to it's already embedded into the plant doesn't even want to come off the this um aphids and then the gnats just flew past me okay so that's one of the issues you're going to encounter when you're growing in uh, succulents indoor or under the grow light and growth wise i'm really happy with the growth i've already established that to start off with and the next issue is mealybugs you get some mealybugs or I get some mealybugs because I don't know if you'll get mealybugs but I have a couple here and there so I have to keep an eye on them and also these like white scales as well so this is an Echeveria melaco that's growing sort of on the side here and uh, when I had this one growing in the center there next uh, down the firing line of the of the light okay so the grow lights well it's just here next to that plant there the belladonna that the milaco was actually like sort of going orangey so all the orange now look at that it was sort of like that or see almost similar to this one but that one is a compressicaulis that's a normal color for that plant now this one went all nice and orange and happy and then i moved it here and it turned black and I kind of like the black uh, look because most of my malaco that I've grown outside now have all gone orangey. There's actually the main one now has gone darker again because we've been getting a lot of um, cloudy days. So it's gone sort of a bit dark green. But still more orange compared to this one. So I kind of like the black look. So anyway, this one's uh, the babies. They like being watered every day, just about. So, because I have it growing in coconut peat. So if you can see down in the bottom, that's all really, look, that's all really, really, really dry. So that roots, see, there's another baby with that, uh, what do you call you? Pudgy, formerly known as vanilla vis. Okay, I've already stuck in there, that's all I do. And then normally I saturate this just about every day. And also when I pick it up that's really really like light very light so i've got this plant growing here this is a warm climate plant it doesn't like it's called plectanthros plectanthros oh never mind <laughs> it's a big plant <laughs> you can read the label there you go anyway when you touch it oh it smells beautiful it's got that oh big smell Anyway, ooh, look what I found here. 
I have some exciting things happening in here. I saw that. There you go. My Buddha's tail is flowering. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, gorgeous. So cute. And this is grown in here. The water. And look at the baby succulent or Buddha's tail growing in the water. So it's been submerged there, the roots. Okay, I'll lift this up. And look at that. I'm smelling it and it doesn't smell bad. It's got that um, sort of earthy smell. But that one, hang on. Babies, I'm touching the baby and you can't see. Yeah, the baby. So look at that, the little burro's tail or burrito. Yeah, burrito. Uh, not burrito, burro's tail. That's burro's tail. There you go. Um, I think um, I will remember the name. It's right now. My brain doesn't work at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I'm filming this. I'm videoing this at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then anyway, I've got all sorts of plants here. I got Darren, yeah, or Darren Oliver, are you Darren Shiana or Darren Oliver, Darren Shiana, look how beautiful, even on the sideline here, that still looks beautiful, and my black rose, it's really a black rose now, it's gone pale, it's, you can still sort of see a tinge of black over there on the side, but this is sort of one on the side as well, I've got another black rose somewhere here, let's go check it out. Okay, so that one, look how beautiful that looks now. So from one plant that I got and it rotted on me after having it for a couple of months, it just sort of disintegrated and luckily I was able to save the leaves and so now I'm very happy. Now I got more black rose and also this one's now the Florina. Look how beautiful that is. I really want to grow it fast and I can't leave it in that soil mix. The soil mix I used for it was 50% um, cocoa peat and 50% uh, small granite. So those white bits there, they're not sand, they're granite, they're decomposed granite. So once they get a bit bigger, then you can transplant them into a much healthier soil because that soil does hardly got anything. They do like uh, some fertilizer, they don't like uh, a lot of fertilizer, but then no fertilizer means that's going to stunt their growth as well. So all these plants now, look at that, even the riga, look how big the riga is. And there's all these baby rigas underneath, so it needs to be transplanted. So I thought I'll just show you. And also I'm going to show you how I water it now. Okay, so I've got my spray bottle here. And the budgie is talking on top of me again. So this is not a very expensive... Okay. Don't drop, don't drop. Okay, spray bottle. And it's got a strap that you can put. I don't normally use this, but I've got a camera on one hand. So unfortunately, I have to use it. So Okay, so I've got this and then I just... Sprayed the whole lot and I sort of got a feel for watering just the right amount. I don't want to water it too much because it's going to drip and it's going to make a mess on my table that I have to wipe down. Okay, so this is an everyday occurrence or sometimes it depends on the humidity. If there's a lot of humidity in the air, then I water it every second day. But if the minute I see that the soil is already dry, then I give them a drink. Okay, and then I go feel that one. That still needs a bit of watering, but I need to pump up my spray bottle again. And my Calicia Rosato, this one, the pink lady. Uh, this is, I water this one every second day. And this one's as well, the corn cob. They love water. So every second day I water them. This one, same thing. If I see it, sometimes I water it every day. Sometimes I water it every second day. This uh, dish of different uh, leafy succulents. And look at that little nice, what are you, pakipaitum. Look how cute and fat. Okay, and then that one is like little rounded finger sticking up. <laughs> so anyway, it's one of those Korean hybrids again. Okay, so this is Secunda Clara. Grown in the sun, they all go orange. But, okay, so that's, and even this one, this one doesn't have any hole. But 
I still like to saturate that, get the wet. And once I see it sort of going translucent like that, that tells me it's time to peel that off. Okay, like that. And throw it away. Because that baby would have roots already. I'm going to tug that. Yep, see? There's resistance already. So it's, it would have, have uh, roots already and that needs to be transplanted as well. So even when they're that size, I like to put them straight away in a much healthier soil so they can grow much faster. And even this frizzle sizzle, it likes sun. But we haven't been getting a lot of sun lately. Oh, hello, baby P. I got a budgie in my shoulder. And uh, so I put it up. Yeah, I know. Pedro, mom is doing a video. Could you please be quiet? So I like to... <laughs> <laughs> I like to water this, I mean, I like to keep this frizzle sizzle, albuca, uh, it says albuca something, frizzle sizzle, okay, this is a frizzle sizzle, Pedro, and I keep it here so as uh, the leaves will curl up, so the more sun they get, the more they curl up, so I only had this for about I think two seasons now, two winters I've got this one because I've got it like autumn or something like that or late anyway, late summer, yeah, actually when they started uh, late spring or something, I can't remember exactly now, but they're about to lose their leaves when I got them, yeah, and then, uh, yes, I know, hello, stop screaming, so I've got a very demanding budgie. Yes, yes, okay, mommy has to stop now, but I'm watering baby pee and also, there you go, yeah, I know. Yep. Are you going to talk to them? See, look at that one. Gone yellow. That's actually lethal crested. That's a beautiful plant. And look at this one. What are you? Hakuhu. Hey, baby P, look. Hakuhu, look how... Hang on. Yeah. Look how pink Hakuhu is. It's almost like West Rainbow. It's going to get wet. The lens is going to get wet. Okay. So you get... <laughs> You get the drift now. You know what I'm trying to say. But anyway, so I do water them a lot. There you go. Thank you. And he just pooped on my shoulder. That silly bird. Anyway, um, so I watered a whole lot. And apart from that, and also, yeah, the mealybug. I want to show you my mealybug. Oh, look how beautiful the lawi. Oh, my Lord. Look how big it is now. Ah, both of them. And then I accidentally touched the tip of this other one so I thought ah oh, I touched a few so I thought I might as well do the whole lot <laughs> that way you can see the difference where they have uh edging and none and see even that look this little the budgie already ate it and then so anyway you easily bump them and they're really high maintenance but they still look beautiful and by the way yeah what I use with the mealybug mealybugs is let's go find some mealybugs can we find, I got a pointy tweezer. I pluck them out. I don't spray them because I don't believe, uh, if you just, on top of things, okay, is that a mealy bug? No, I don't know. No, hang on. No, it's not. It's just the farina. Uh, okay, so this is uh, hovei, sunnyai. Okay, I think, is there a mealy bug? I think there's a mealy bug in there somewhere. Do you have a mealy bug? So I just go... I think there's a fluffy white bit there or none or none. Okay, it's hard finding mealybugs. Okay. I need mealybugs. Could you please show up? Oh, this one should have a mealybug. Do you have a mealybug? You should have a mealybug. None. Okay, I think that fluffy bit. No, it's not farina as well. Okay, so <laughs> when if I do find mealybug, that's what I do. I just pick it out with a tweezer. So, which is very, uh, probably I'll find one every three days. Uh, but, so you just have to check and keep an eye on things. And then apart from that, there's really no maintenance in looking out after a grow light plants. So, I still can't find anything. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'll go to the other side and see what it looks like. And also, this Echeveria Bluebird, I chopped that off in end of actually June end of June so we left so June 
July, August, September, it's October now, so three months, three months and one week, okay, so three months and one week, and it wouldn't root, so I just left it here, and then the other day I put, lifted it up, and look, see the roots all coming out, so that's ready to be transplanted, so I need to do a video showing you how to plant this, that's why. I'm doing this video so you can see and that one's only got a little bit but even that one I can put that in the soil already and this one oh that one's the second more roots look at that okay and also this are just grown in water so look at that look how how big this this is a Chiviria pumila and look how much uh, roots it's got. Okay, go back in there, go back in there, go back there. Okay, and this one is Halbingeri, a Chivria Halbingeri. And again, same thing. Look how much roots. So they will grow in water. And let's see the Frosty. Frosty is a bit fussy. And look, even Frosty's got water. I mean, it's got roots and a baby. Look, it's got baby on the side. Oh, how exciting. So they do grow, and that one is a Sempervivum. See, so it needs water as well there. And this other V, this is hairy balls. Okay, and normally it looks like that. Uh, beautiful plant, but then normally when I keep it outside, it goes all red and hairy. And look at the flower on water indoors next to the grow light. And it's flowering. Look at that, amazing. And this one is a poor plant. In Philippines, we call it this a pedilanthus zigzag plant. We normally call this pobrinkaho. Now, probably it's a different plant. I'm uh, thinking now, but this one now, I took some cuttings, and it's called Apache Magic. And this whole plant actually is purple. So now I took a cutting. I chopped them off, and those leaves that I've taken. New growth, look at that. I can almost, see like that? Cut that away and then plant that. So even that one there, so that will be another plant. And I'll probably leave a couple of them in there and take, oh, oh there's more in the bottom, there you go. So, um, what else? And this one needs to go outside. This is Pachyveria Mertella or Blue Tongue. But it's all, how big is that? Like, it's all big. Gorgeous, look at that. It doesn't look like a uh, Mertella anymore. Okay, so we'll go over here. So same thing, I just watered a lot. Even this plant, the pickle plant. Uh, water it when it's wet or this one is still heavy. So I'm not going to water that. And my West Rainbow, that's sort of 48% only. So I can water that and this one. Ah, Look how beautiful this variegation on that uh, West Rainbow. It's just gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, and the lovely rose. Oh, did I see um, gnats? No. I mean, fun, uh, what do you call it? Mealybug. No, I don't think so. Is there a mealybug there? Okay, I'm checking. No, I did not. Anyway, so that's it, guys. Oh, the seeds. Okay, this one, Anacamceros, you have to water it every day. They like being moist. They can grow outside. It doesn't matter what temperature it is. But um, I thought I'll just bring it here to see how fast it grows here. But I can't see any difference whether it's outside or inside. They still grow. And this is my mother, Kalisha Rosato. Look at that. Not beautiful. So I've already taken off a lot of babies. So the other one you saw was also cutting from that one already. And the ones I've given away, most of their Kalisha's died now. So I have to propagate some more and give them some more. But anyway, this one at the ebony. Look how many heads from, oopsie. I got one, two, three, four, four, at least five. There's another one there. See, tiny one. Okay, so five plants came out of that one plant. So very, very happy and of progress and if I paid for the Mars Hydro SP3000 myself I would have gotten my money back uh, 10 times over tenfold and all those babies there they can be transplanted and also look at this oh cubic frost look how many clusters one two three that's a beautiful cluster I'm not gonna break that up because I already got single um, cubic frost but I haven't got a clustered one 
So there you go guys and that's about it. So no maintenance at all and you can bring in a lot of plants. This is a lot of plants that's being taken up, uh, taking up the light or dependent on the light that the Mars Hydro SP3000 is providing. But watering every day for the, uh, the babies like this, depending on your soil of course, if you have a uh, soil that's sort of really wet all the time, then I would suggest watering it when that soil dries up. But the coconut peat, I water every day with a coconut peat because it dries up really quick. So it doesn't really hold that much moisture. It can absorb a lot of moisture really quick, but it can also uh, expel it or repel it really, really quick as well. So that's it. Anyway, all my variegated babies, I'm going to have to do a video on how I'm going to separate that. That would be exciting, that one. an exciting, interesting topic. And also my Bibina, look how beautiful she is now. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much. So I hope you got something out of my little jibber jabber there and i'm just going to continue watering this and also that diffractance oh my goodness look at the diffractance look how beautiful that is okay more beautiful plants here and finally i've got a normal looking graptivaria debbie okay so but then that one leaf is just flick on the side again so but it's good it's all good i'm happy if you're happy i'm happy we're all happy and more babies now I'm putting here to grow.